Hey guys, in this video, I want to review a paper that was um, suggested by a guy that I just interviewed named Ivan Cummings. Brilliant guy, he's an engineer, and he sent me this link of this amazing paper, and I put a link down below so you can get a copy of it too. So this paper revolves around the concept that when you do gastric bypass, you actually correct high insulin, even if the insulin resistance remains, okay? So it actually, doing gastric bypass can reverse type 2 diabetes, among other diseases associated with metabolic syndrome. Now, metabolic syndrome typically is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or prediabetes, central obesity, uh, hardening of the arteries. That's typically what metabolic syndrome is, okay? So this observation has led uh, researchers to examine if these diseases were actually caused by high insulin, because if you look up metabolic syndrome, it always will say high insulin or insulin resistance is associated with metabolic syndrome or these other conditions. It never gets into if it causes it, okay? So they reviewed 423 publications, but only selected 58 because out of all these publications, only 58 measured insulin. So they wanted just to focus on those. And what they found is quite remarkable. They found high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, atherosclerosis, central obesity, that's, a, that's belly fat, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, sleep apnea, certain cancers, 14 of them, and cardiovascular disease all shared a common etiology, okay? Etiology means it causes something. In other words, it's pretty obvious that high insulin causes all of these. This metabolic syndrome isn't some mysterious disease that's complex. It's purely just a name to describe these specific symptoms, I'm gonna call them symptoms, that are all coming from high insulin. So let's just kind of go through this. In this section right here, they're looking at actual the function of insulin and if you have too much insulin, what symptoms it creates, right? It stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and increases sodium retention. Well, that's gonna increase blood pressure. Okay, so it's a direct effect. Um, increasing PCOS, polycystic ovarian, because insulin increases androgens. It also increases something called um, foam cell formation and giving you uh, like a building up the plaque in the artery that causes heart disease. That's coming from high insulin. Check this, it says, hence patients with hyperglycemia, that's high sugar, like in diabetes or prediabetes, inevitably have a pre-existing high insulin level, assuming their pancreas remains functional. So in other words, you have high insulin first, then you get high blood sugars. So traditionally, high insulin has been considered a response to insulin resistance. So they're basically saying uh, high insulin is a side effect of insulin resistance. However, our previous findings suggest that high insulin is primary in diabetes type 2, which means high insulin causes it. And insulin resistance is most likely a secondary response by the cells. So basically, you have high insulin, and then insulin resistance, and then diabetes. Now the problem is that you never checked for high insulin, right? You just, they never checked that. They're focusing on blood glucose, which is late on the chain of events. Okay, so then we get to the discussion, okay? Can increase insulin be used as a clinical marker in primary care setting for early diagnosis and preventive care? And would these markers be more effective than glucose levels? I'm gonna answer that, that's a big fat yes. Okay, yes, we wanna check insulin first. Um, it's more important than even checking your glucose levels. Number two, would pharmacological intervention that normalizes blood insulin levels before the emergence of glucose intolerance and hyperglycemia, that's high blood glucose, be a beneficial approach to hinder the progression of metabolic disorders? Uh, that answer is no. We don't wanna use drugs. We wanna do it with diet, okay? And finally, they're talking about why would we give people insulin or medication that raises insulin in diabetes type 2 if the cause is high insulin? After all, we do not treat hyperthyroidism with additional thyroxine. Why are we treating a disease associated with hyperinsulin with additional insulin? 
So I think this article is very valuable because there's certain researchers now that are starting to become aware of the connection between insulin and so many health problems. So I put a link down below, check out the article, and also send this to your doctor so they can be educated on some real interesting and valuable information. So I wanna know what you're interested in as far as an, a future video. Click the link down below and share some ideas I wanna hear.